I'll have to go all the way in to get this one, Houston. Oh no! What's up guys, this is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and before I even get started, can you see how green it is out here? Spring has definitely sprung. The trees right here aren't really blooming out, budding out very well, but there's a lot of trees in the area that have leafed out completely. Ours are mostly oak trees, so they're a little slower, but got a special treat for you guys today. We are loading up the little, uh, I think this was originally an aluminum dog box, but I used it to transport all kinds of small animals. And it's that time of year. Spring's here and uh, pigs are coming back to the farm. You guys saw last year we raised three feeder pigs here and had them processed for us and my in-laws and other in-laws, my, my wife's parents and then her brother and his wife. And the pork was really good, however, the processor we used did not do a great job on the bacon. That's the biggest issue I've ran into with processing hogs, is their cured meats are just, in our area, are not great. But we're getting pigs again, and I'm gonna run up to the house, get Houston and Jacoby. They're gonna help me today. We're gonna go pick up some pigs. I probably won't show a lot of the farm where we're going to just for their own privacy of their farm. I don't know if they wanna be shown to, you know, half a million people, but, we're gonna bring them home. They're little bitty weaning age pigs. And we're gonna do something a little bit different this year than last year. They're not gonna be on the farm near as long, I'll tell you that. And uh, I've got a plan and it's gonna work out. It's gonna be a collaborative effort, we'll say. But uh, anyways, let's load up the boys and go get some pigs. Waiting on Kobe, always waiting on Kobe. You know, you move at your own pace, you know that? Some people would call it a snail's pace or slow, but I just call it Jacoby speed. All right, you ready? Yeah. Are you excited to get pigs again? Yeah. Yeah? Name them Whistling Diesel and Holler. Or you just name them Pig 1, Pig 2, Pig 3? Pig 10. Well, I don't know about Pig 10. Ooh. Well, we made it home, stopped by the feed store and got several hundred pounds of feed. We're gonna mix corn chops and the same feed that I fed last year. It's called A&M Arbuckle 18 Show Hog Feed. It's just made locally here in Oklahoma. It's 18% protein. Not that we're gonna be showing these pigs, but uh, we may have gotten a few more than we had last year. So last year we raised three pigs. <laughs> there are six little pigs in here right now. Six little pigs going to market. But uh, I'm gonna unload some of this feed and then we I've got the pen set up where I had the little hog shelter down there next to the greenhouse last year. I've reduced the size of the pen since these guys are real small. I'm not gonna have them in a big large pen. They're not gonna be on the, the hot wire, the permanent electric fence or anything right now. So they'll just be inside some hog panels for a little bit and then uh, we'll make their pin bigger as they grow a little. Don't you open that. 
Don't you open that. I'm not going to pick that up. Where did you go? Check the men of traps. Hey. What? Wait. Can we finish what we're doing with the pigs first? Pretty stout there, Kobe. Push the button and turn it off, Kobe. Okay. Or, yeah, exactly. If it's clicking, it's on. Here, just leave. Hey, I'm going back up the other side. Well, we're just coming in right here. Don't let the chickens out. You're good. Houston. Where's your marshmallows? I'll go get them in a minute. I don't know if we have any right now. No. Skip's curious. Skip wants to know what's going on. Don't you, Skip? You're like, who's here? Come here, Earl. Come here, buddy. Earl? I'm going to introduce you to something you've never seen before. Look, what's in there? <laughs> Earl don't have a clue. It's called a pig, Earl. So I'm going to unload these little baby hogs. We're just going to keep them in a small pen. As you can see, it's probably 10 by 20. And uh, like I said, we bought six pigs. And I'm telling you what, these guys are about the perfect size, I would say, to start off with. They are two months old, so they were born in mid-February. And they hadn't been castrated until today. So I just want to let you guys know that. You may see some blood on the inside of the cage and some blood on some of these pigs. They're all barrows, which is a castrated male, except for one. The one white one is a gilt, and the rest are barrows. Well, actually, I think there's actually I think there's more than one white one, but there's one white gilt, and the the white ones are Burke uh, Chester White crossbred, and then the black ones with the white stripe are Hamps Hampshire. So let's get them unloaded, and I'll explain to you why we have six pigs and what we're going to do so we're going to try to get all of these baby pigs in the pen without losing any of them and uh, there may be some squalling and screaming and crying but we'll get them unloaded she's like what is this place what is this place oh no get out, no bella bella, bella. Get back, Bella. Bella Get down, no. Bella. Get down, Bella. Look at those little chunguses. Bella, no. This one's a little bitty guy. Yeah, he is. So there's two white ones and four black ones. One more. One more. I'll have to go all the way in to get this one, Houston. Bell no. Look. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, Houston. We're gonna fill up our little Ninja Turtle sandbox here for water for them for now, okay? We gotta give them a, we gotta give them some mud too. Well, they're a little bitty. They don't need mud just yet, but look at Earl. He's like, what in the world kind of dog is that? Hello. Huh, Earl, you're just hiding behind Bella.
Look out, look out. So I'm gonna be starting these pigs out on that mixture of that Arbuckle 18 pig feed and corn chops. <clears throat> and pigs, especially young pigs, really, really love their food soaked in water. Some of you are gonna wonder why there's a board there. It's because there's a hole where I put my automatic pig feeder. But these little pigs are too small for an automatic pig feeder right now. So they're just gonna get uh, a mixture of corn chops and pig feed and Houston's gonna play in it and soften it up apparently. And uh, everyone's curious. The goats are all wondering what in the world's going on. And Bella and Bear over there, I mean Bella and uh, Earl over there are curious. What is that Earl? Huh? You don't have to bark at them. So I can tell you right now, these baby pigs are already more gentle than the ones that we started off with last year. You guys may remember some of those <laughs> old pig videos from last year. Those little babies were wild right from the get-go. And these are much more calm, much more gentle. They've obviously been handled a little bit more. And I think they're taking it pretty well for some guys who just recently got castrated about an hour ago. Yeah. We got one guy in the little shelter. <laughs> He's like, uh, I don't know about this place. This is different. This is different and it's not home. So why in the world did we get six feeder pigs this year instead of three? And what are we gonna do with them? And what did I mean by they're not gonna stay here near as long? So last year we started off with three feeder pigs. We had Harry, we had Fatty Patty, and we had Bacon. And they all three we're here for about six, maybe close to seven months and went to the processor, averaged about 300 pounds a piece. And like I said, we kept one for us, one for my mother-in-law and father-in-law and one for my brother-in-law and sister-in-law and baby Brooks and worked out perfectly. However, I wasn't super impressed with the bacon and uh, uh, it just didn't turn out like I wanted it, but I've got a better plan this year. So six pigs starting off and we're only gonna have them here for probably about a month. Now, how in the world are we going to get enough meat off of six pigs in a month? Well, we're not. See, we only need one pig this year. And I worked out a deal with my good buddy. Dutch. Dutch. Dutch loves raising pigs, but he's in the process of transitioning from his farm to the off-grid property, and he's not ready to have pigs just yet. And I said, well, what if I start them out and you finish them off on your new place? And he said, that sounds like a good idea. So he couldn't find what he was looking for in his area as far as feeder pigs go last year. So he ended up coming down here and buying his pigs from the same guy I got these from. And it worked great. They turned out great. He loved them and uh, they grew just fine. So he said, why don't you buy some pigs, start them out, and then we'll switch and he'll finish them off once he gets his pig pen ready on the off-grid property. Earl, you gotta quit barking. So... The six pigs, one's for me, one's for Dutch, and then he raises, I think he's gonna give his brother one, and then he always raises some for church members. So if you're not familiar with Dutch, Keeping It Dutch on YouTube, go check him out. He raises pigs every year, and uh, we're gonna have a, a pretty busy schedule this summer, and I said, I just don't know if I wanna raise pigs. And butcher dates are extremely hard to come by. Like, you have to schedule that stuff now almost a full year in advance where used to you could get a butcher date within a month or so ahead of time you just call and schedule it now so many people since 2020 happened and everything that went on there so many people are are worried about food security which is understandable and where their food's going to come from so a lot of the butcher dates are taken up and dutch has his already scheduled i mean these pigs had butcher dates before they were born and it's just kind of the how, kind of the way you have to do things now. And I absolutely love the processor, the processor that Dutch uses. And that's about three and a half or four hours away from us. So 
I bought all six of these pigs. I'm gonna feed them for a month or so. And then Dutch and I are gonna swap out when he gets his pig pen ready and he's gonna finish them off. And then I'll just pay for the processing on mine at his processor with the date that's already been set. And uh, I think it'll work out perfect for both families and several other families, obviously. And uh, you know, the great thing is <laughs> these baby pigs at two months old only cost, I paid $35 a piece for them. So yeah, I can't beat that. Now it's gonna take a lot of money to feed them up to 300 pounds. I, I totally know that plus processing fees and everything. There's some money that goes into it, but we're gonna split it and work together even though we live almost four hours apart and it'll work for everyone. And we get to have pigs on our farm when they're fun, when they're small. Ain't that right? Yeah. Houston can feed them marshmallows and whatever all else. <laughs> we fed them all kinds of snacks, snacks last year when they were little, didn't Salt, we? Saltine crackers. Saltine crackers. Hey, deer like them too. Yeah. These pigs are probably like apples or leftover fruit or all kinds of different stuff. So. We're gonna let these guys eat and uh, let them settle into their new little home here. <laughs> some of them are a little bit scared and some of them are like, oh man, this food's good. So the only thing left to do is probably put a little bit of hay in their shelter here just so they can cuddle up and stay warm at night. We're still getting down into the low 40s at night. Daytime temperatures are in the 60s and 70s. And before long, all of these trees will be leafed out around me and a lot of this pig pen is in the shade most of the day. I would like to be able to, I don't know, I thought about building a pen under the back side of the barn where I've got all the rest of the animals because it just makes sense. There's water. I got the barn with all the feed and everything there, but I really liked having these pigs out back here next to the garden last year. It gets them a little farther away from the house and the barn because pigs do put off a pretty strong odor. And my wife does not like the smell of pig poop and pig pens. And they love to make mud holes and stuff like that. So this will give these pigs a place to uh, do pig things out in the dirt. Ain't that right, Houston? Anything else you boys got to say? They're cute. They're and... cute. That's about it, huh? Yeah. All right, well, Jacoby, you ain't said a word all video. You ain't said a word. Hey. <coughs> oh, gosh. Allergies are kicking in. Hey, we haven't said like, subscribe, and the bell. We can do that for the first time. Like literally. In a long time. And forever. <laughs> Come on, Kobe, you got this. Can you wrap the video up for us? You talk to yeah? everybody. All right. We gotta be able to hear you, boy. Go we gotta be able to hear you. Go down there, subscribe, smash the bell, and uh, so thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you on the next video. Peace. Well, we'll see you on the next video. You talk so soft and gentle. <laughs> you pigs are dirty. You need to wash you off. Dirty little pigs. <laughs>